Hi, I'm Edgar. And I'm Heather. Welcome to another episode of Does a Decade Matter? Where generations X and Y intersect to discuss, argue, and sometimes agree on movies. My turn, my turn, my turn. Yes, it is. I did it. I picked it. Yep. And this was not my original pick for this week. But there's all this talk about the show on a cable channel that we don't get because we don't have cable. You want to know what it's called? Is it Sherlock? No. It's Fargo. Morgan Freeman's in the, in the, the, the Fargo show. Is he really? Yeah. Damn, we might actually have to watch that someday. Did I say Morgan? I meant Martin. Martin Freeman. Who? Uh, Watson. Oh! Yeah, because Morgan... Mr. Arthur Dent. Oh, because Morgan Freeman is totally different. Yeah, he was on last week... No, he was on seven, your last pick. Yeah, my last pick. So, I decided for shits and giggles, um, and since I own the movie, that we should watch it. By the way, this is going up late and we both have colds. We so both have colds. This will probably be a short one. Yes. So, um, there might be awkward cuts for coughing fits no, or I'm sneezing fits. I'm leaving those in. Why do you hate me? Because they hate me just as much. Oh, that's fair. So, my number one conclusion is it's not as funny as it used to be. Yeah, I don't understand really what why any of these things happened. Like, I think I missed something in, in the first ten minutes. No. Like, why did he need to, to three quarters of a million dollars? Um, cause... Okay. The reason why the dude was asking for VIN numbers mm-hmm. is because GMC gave them a loan of three quarters of a million dollars uh-huh. on the guarantee that they would sell those cars. But the cars didn't exist. Uh, I see. So he got the money, basically, and the collateral doesn't exist. That's, like, fraud and yes. embezzlement. Yes. <clears throat> that's, that's not a good thing. Right. Which is why he needed the money. To pay it back? Or... Um, to not get caught. Okay. Because you see, what he was going, what he wanted to do is he wanted to get the money from his father-in-law. Right. To cover the fraud so he didn't go to jail. Right. And then, in theory, the investment was going to be good enough to cover that and it all would be well in the world. But... These cars still didn't exist. Right. But if they called in the loan, he would have the money. They never explained what he did with the $750 to begin with. Like, why he doesn't have it anymore. I didn't hate this movie, but I just didn't understand why this happened. Because dude's an idiot. Oh, yeah. I mean, clearly, he's William H. Macy. Yes. Who is not actually an idiot. He's a fine actor. He is, but he plays a really good idiot. It's true. So, that is why. Okay. To cover up a fraud. Alright. I think from, like, a filmmaking point of view, this is such a Coen Brothers movie. Is it one of their first ones? It was one of their earlier ones. I want to say it was the, in their first five. Because I know okay. there's Blood Simple and Hudded Sucker Proxy came before this. Oh, I haven't seen those two. I should see those. Hudded Sucker Proxy is really good. I haven't seen all of uh, Blood Simple. Yeah. But this was before the Big Lebowski and right. what have you. And it's like, it's hard to explain what makes it a Coen Brothers movie. But you just watch it and say... Yeah, no one else could have made that. Right. That is... I think most of it's, like, just these super wide establishing shots that they have. Yeah. Well, they do they write and direct? Do they do <coughs> both? They, they produce, write, and direct just the two of them. Okay. And because of some filmmakers or screenwriters guild things... Right. Directors guild... Uh, you couldn't be credited, you couldn't have two people credited as the director, even if they were doing the, the, the directing jobs. 
Really? So one would get um, a production credit and the other would get the uh, the director's credit. And I noticed would, that there was just, only one. They would just switch back and forth. Oh. Until recently, which either means that the DGA rules changed or they just resigned from the director's guild. Oh. Because there have been a couple other people who famously burned their DGA cards because they wanted to shoot um, anthology films. Okay. Like, Four Rooms. Right. Everyone who directed a segment of that just burned their DGA card because... Otherwise they wouldn't get credit? According to guild... No, according to guild rules, they couldn't have more than one director on the picture. So, Tarantino. Yeah. I think they... I think there were four credits. Well, no, there were, but he's done more than... He's been a part of more than one film set up that way. Right. Like Sin City. He only did one scene for that. Apparently Malcolm has an opinion. I think he didn't like Sin City. It's okay. It was a Frank Miller piece, so I don't think you were supposed to like it or find any redeeming quality in it. Um, Josh Hartnett's in that. Yeah, that's not a redeeming quality. He's only in it for, He's in that first, that opening th- scene with Rose McGowan. In the end. Oh, is he? Yeah. I don't remember watching it to the he's, end. He's also in the end. Well, there's no reason to watch that movie. It's written no, by Frank right. Miller. But... Whom I have a strong opinion about. I have a story... Because I always have a story mm-hmm. about films. Yes, you do. Um, when I was in broadcast school, it was a class, and it was one of the gen ed classes. It wasn't even related to broadcasting or any of that whatsoever. And I don't even remember what class it was. It wasn't a film studies class. It might have been our economics class or psychology, one of the two. Okay. We managed to talk our teacher into showing the movie because it related. To what? Obviously nothing. Okay. Um, mostly because one of my co-broadcast guys was in this movie. Uh-huh. Never saw his face. Oh, okay. He's in the uh, garage scene, and he walks, and he has long hair down to his, like, ass, and he's kind of a burly dude. Um, and so that is why, that is why we watched it. We oh. raced it, we wasted two class periods for it. It was awesome. Wow. And then at the end, the teacher was like, yeah, I got nothing. I think that's what a lot of people walk out of Coen Brothers movies with. It's like, well, <coughs> everyone's pretty much dead. But what happened? Yeah. Well, um... And there has been at least, was it a, it was some sort of foreign tur- tur- tourist, it wasn't an American tur- tourist, it was, I th- I think it was Chinese, but I, d- I can't be 100%, went to North Dakota looking for the money and died. That could also be an urban legend. Yeah, IMDB mentioned something about people have gone looking for money that they didn't find. Because guess what? Even though it said it was based on a true story, that's not true. It didn't say it was based on it. It just said, this is a (coughs) true story. Yeah, it was... Everything is the same. It was made up whole cloth by the Coen brothers. None of these things happened. I mean, there were two similar-ish crimes. Right. But... No. They just wrote that. To be funny. Are they from here? They're from St. Louis Park. Oh. Which... That would explain why they actually got all of the geography right. Oh, Most yeah. of the Minnesota-based ones don't. <coughs> oh, that's get true. the geography right. Um, yeah, there is a, a, a R- Radisson in downtown Minneapolis. Yep. I, think that was, I think that was the one in Richfield, though. Because... It's not the red chair tree. I think I've ate, eaten poutine in, in that. Uh, no, it wasn't. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Um, cause it would have been pre-remodel, and they never had doors into that area. Okay. So it is not actually at the red chair tree. So. Any other thoughts? Go bears. Go bears. That you... it. Well, when we when I 
when you selected it, because we actually <coughs> watched it not off of my DVD, um, that it was listed under comedy. Yeah, it wasn't. It's actually list. It's act. Its technical description is a dark comedy. You didn't see the rabbit ears there, but they were there. Oh, the dark comedy. It was a dark comedy. It Be- well, it has the funny making fun of our talk. Which, if you've been north of Roseville, there are people who talk like that. Oh, Iron Rangers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, the Iron Range? Oh, 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 jeez. Oh, no. See, and I say, oh, jeez. No, I think I'm just getting morning sick. Yeah. And when I lived in Nebraska, when I first moved down there, I lived there for two years. When I first moved down there, I was coming home every other week. And I finally, there was a stretch... Where I didn't come home for six weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I used to get offended when I was down there when people would be like, so you're from Minnesota, huh? And I'm like, I don't, t- what are you talking about? How can you tell? I'm a Midwesterner. We all sound the same. Nah, um, not true. <coughs> and then I took six weeks off, came home, and was like, oh, shit. Oh, yeah, all those local, the, the Collo- local, local colloquialisms, the yes. idioms. Oh, jeez. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and... Oh, the, by golly. And the accent, and... Go Gophers. I think I also went up north to the cabin. Up At, north, huh? Up north. Oh, you went to up the lake. To, we went up to, oh, to we the lake. We went up to the lake. Oh, the lake. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, I remember walking around going, oh god, it's true. See, the one time I spent a significant time <laughs> significantly <laughs> disparate... <laughs> from Minnesota, I spent a week in Texas hanging out with a friend of mine from high school, and I would just put on the most absurd Minnesotan accent. That's because you're a jerk. Oh, I would play it up so much. Ew, oh woof da. And people didn't believe I was from Minnesota. They're like, no, where did you emigrate from to Minnesota? Like, really? R- really? The Iron Range. You think I'm Swedish? No. <laughs> He had a little hint of, of Swedish chef in there. It's like with, with this bearded, uh, bl- brown-haired mug? No, not from Sweden. That's funny. Oh, you got anything else? Um. Because I'm, like, about to fall asleep. And I'm trying to stop a coughing fit. So, this has been our abbreviated Fargo chit-chat. Yeah. Which was probably the best, because we didn't actually have a lot to talk about. No, no, not. It's a good Coen Brothers movie. Well, it's a Coen Brothers movie. I'll watch it every couple years. If it's on TV, will you go home and watch it from the DVD? No, this has been downgraded to I'll watch it while I'm also watching something else on a different channel. Oh, I see. Yes, but that process would improve if we had cable so I could have more than one thing to watch at a time. You're barking up the wrong tree. I know. There will be no cable. Alright, we'll end it there, right? Thank you for listening to this episode of Does a Decade Matter? You can download us on iTunes and find us on Stitcher. Follow us on Twitter at DADMPod or like us on Facebook and email us at DADMPod at gmail.com. See you next Wednesday!